All right. So walls and drawing methods. And Mirza brought up a good point. He said, hey, I used AutoCAD to help me figure this project out, the exact dimensions. Uh, it's a good way of going about it, right? I think it's a good workflow, unless you don't know AutoCAD, right? <laughs> and then, of course, we have to use the tool that we have. So we'll talk about that a little bit more. But I wanted you to kind of try and figure it out somewhat, right? And get, because in figuring it out, you're moving walls back and forth. You're using dimensions. You are, you know, you're doing a lot of drawing technique. And so you're getting used to the tool and trying to figure it out, right? But it is, you know, we'll, we'll talk about how to fine tune it. Um, in fact, we'll, we'll do two things to fine tune it. All right. So I'm going to... I'm going to open up a blank file here. I'm going to open up architectural template. Okay. Before I forget, I'll do this for Paul. We're having a club meeting tomorrow. Paul's our president. Um, we're having a club meeting tomorrow at 11 a.m. And I, I have a, I had an appointment already, so I couldn't. I, I'm not going to be there. We have pizza and soda, a couple of laundry. Yes. 11 a.m. up in the conference room in 506, um, and they're gonna we're gonna um, accept club dues. So if you want to be a member of the architecture club, you can come up, and they're gonna talk about all the activities they're planning for the semester and probably beyond, honestly, yeah. right? Um, cool with ideas because it's yeah. Like yeah. Your club is such a resources. Yeah, be fun. Yeah, it's right? a lot of fun. Um, so there's that, and then. Uh, I was telling Jake, and I talked to Kevin, and then I didn't get the exact dates for skill <laughs> or the exact details for skills. I was going to tell you this too. Sorry, last class. Um, we're having a Skills USA competition on the eighth, February eighth. Okay. So we might want to advertise that also to the club. But it's a drafting competition, and it doesn't matter if you draft in AutoCAD or in um, in uh, AutoCAD or Revit, either one. So those of you that know AutoCAD already, you guys should come and participate because you can win prizes. Um, and if you are the best and you win the competition, you get a, they fly you to Tennessee and you get to compete in their um, national thing, right? Um, and what's really good about competitions, those of you that want to go to the University of Utah, they like to see competitions in your portfolio, right? Um, they, they just do. And so those are always really good things to enter if you're good at AutoCAD, right? Um, we're learning Revit, obviously, but I know, I know now that I think about it, a few of you that are good, right? So you should come and enter. Um, and that will be, Kevin is going to hold a day session on Wednesday the 7th, and we'll hold, I'm going to be holding a night session of the skills on Thursday the 8th, and it will be at 7 o'clock. So we'll post it on the architecture website. You guys want to take a sneak. It? It'll be here. Yep, it'll be here. Good, good, good. You know AutoCAD, right? Do you know yeah. AutoCAD? Okay. Okay. Yes, and I will bring that with me next time. Yes. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yep. Yes. Uh, Tuesday tomorrow. Yep. It's ten dollars a semester. Yes. Yes. Okay. Good. Good. All right. So those. Is that all I had to? <laughs> okay. Oh my goodness. All right. Yeah, get to know each other, people. You will all be in school together for a very long time if you, <laughs> you know, continue on. So, <laughs> I probably said this. <laughs> it's not a nightmare. <laughs> I say this a lot, but some of my best friends that I still are like my very best friends now I met in school. You know, my husband and I, we we didn't finish school together, but we we started out. We didn't meet in school either, but we ended up going to school together, right? Um, funny enough, but some. You know, some of the people I love the most in my life are I met in school, and some of the people I hate the most I never want to see again. <laughs> I met in school. Um, so get to know each other. Yeah, they're from Vernal. Yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah. There's a Shelly bodily from Vernal. Yeah, isn't that funny? Yeah, that's... I don't know her. <laughs> I don't know her. My mother-in-law ran that into her. Be a weird way you were talking about yourself. No. <laughs> oh, really? That's interesting. The Harrisons? Okay, I'll have to ask him. It's a small world. Well, his his dad is a vet, and he used to have a company uh, that he he's retired now, but he d had the first in-home pet care. So he had a van, and he would go around and do vet veterinary care in your home, right? And so everybody knows him. I, I get comments about him all the time because he was their vet. 
I will. I will. Let's run into the world. All right, back to walls. Okay, let's let's talk about walls first, and then we'll talk about how to fine tune your drawings next. Um, uh, levels. Let me just clarify on levels, right? I'm gonna go to a view where I can see levels, of course. It looks like you're all creating your levels very nicely. Um, a couple of things that I kind of noticed, and uh, it's just you know you may not know quite yet. Um, you want to probably have your level one at zero. And then if you have something above or below that, then you want to establish those datums above or below, right? Meaning if I have a joy space, you know, connected with level one, which you will have, um, then you want that to be below level one. You don't want to bump level one up 14 inches and have your joists at level zero, okay? Um, so that's kind of one comment. Um, <laughs> um, sorry, I, you just made me lose my concentration there. Uh, but I think in general, all of your levels are looking pretty good. Um, one thing I want to comment on as well, and I think I saw somebody trying to do this, you can't make walls in the elevation view, right? So if you establish your levels and then you try and generate walls, it won't allow you to do it in an elevation view. You have to do that in either a 3D view or a floor plan view, okay? Um, so let's talk about some walls here. I'm going to go to my level one, okay? And I'm going to turn on my crop region just so I can see it. That's, or hopefully... There we go, that one. There it is, so we can see what's going on here. Um, is everybody pretty okay and comfortable with the idea of drawing with walls, right? Mm -hmm. Temporary dimensions, you'll, you know, generally you know how to do it, right? So in, you understand the idea of temporary dimensions, um, those kind of things. Anybody struggling with that? Using dimensions to help you draw things, does that sort of make sense to everyone? Hopefully. Okay. So far. So far, okay. Well, let's talk about defining walls then, um, which is the information part of building information modeling, right? Um, and kind of the beauty of Revit, where we have uh, we have information built into our building objects and our and our project or building assemblies, essentially, right? So, you know, in AutoCAD, when we want to define a wall that is um, a two by six stud with gypsum board on both sides, we throw down four lines, and that represents a wall, right? And how, depending on how far apart those lines are, we sort of get an inclination as to what they mean, right? They're five and a half inches apart, or uh, yeah, five and a half inches apart, that means it's a two by six, right? You have half inch um, offsets on either side, it's gypsum board, okay? Um, with our walls in Revit, we are gonna actually define those items and they become 3D elements, right? So we build the, the idea of um, a stud and gypsum board and bad insulation and a membrane into our wall system. Okay, it doesn't just, you know, lines don't just represent that, we actually build it in there, okay? So let's, let's uh, create some walls. I'm going to use my little drop down here and the, the shortcut command is WA. Maybe you guys are hopefully getting used to that. I'm gonna draw some walls here. That's crooked, that's okay. In fact, I'm just gonna click on it and drag it in a little bit, maybe to give a little bit of variety. Trim, trim, right, there we go. And maybe I'm going to create another wall, and I'm just going to draw that, you know. Trim, trim, TR. TR, yep, trim. There we go, looks pretty good. So I have two little structures here, and I can look at them in elevation view, right? And I can grab my levels, and I can drag these out, you know. Of course, it's always habit for me to do that, to make it look nice. Yeah, that didn't go as well for me. No? No? Huh, okay. I can click <laughs> on everything around that. Oh, Quite capture it. So it could be if you're clicking there, that doesn't always. Yeah. And if you click too many times, then it goes like that. Yeah. And if you're too, if you're, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then if these are, if your scale is somewhat um, making your annotation rather large, like this, and they, you know, you get a few next to each other, and maybe they somewhat overlap a little bit, then it's hard to navigate them, right? Um, one thing that might help this. It might not, but if you tab, this one's not helping. That one didn't help. Sometimes you can tab and get to the next one, right? Um, if things are sort of, you know, overlapped and it's really hard to navigate it, I will change the scale, right? Quarter of an inch, and I'll get those things so that they are further apart, okay? Even if you have to change it back to the original scale, it's easier to do this and then go back and change it. Um, when I'm selecting things, right, I, with levels and annotation, and, and let me pull a section and talk about this. Um, 
you know, you can grab what maybe we call the stem, right? So you're grabbing the line, click, and it selects it. Escape, escape, right? If I click on, you know, this area, click, then I grab it. Escape, escape. If I click on this, I mean, I can double click very fast. Hopefully it will go to floor plan, click, click, and it takes me to the floor plan, right? I'm going to close out of my floor plan. I can click on that. And this is really what I'm looking for when I'm trying to drag these back and forth, right? Which in this case, it's pretty um, evident, but if I'm down here, sometimes it's hard to grab that little bubble right there, right? So just know that. All right, so let's look at walls. I wanna remind you about um, constraining your walls, right? When you're drawing things, constraining meaning I have a bottom constraint and I have a top constraint, okay? And I just want to say this again, but foundation walls function a little bit differently than walls on the upper levels, right? Um, so we're not going to do those just yet. We're going to kind of focus on the upper walls. So when I look at a wall like this, and I'm going to do a WT window tile. Oop, I have four things, which is not what I want. WT. Here's my elevation view. Here's my floor plan view, just like or a 3D view, right? Um, this wall right now, it is defined as being constrained at level one, right, the bases, and the top constraint is unconnected. And what that means is that um, we have a default height of 20 feet, and when something is unconnected, Revit just assigns 20 feet as its height, right, so that's where that comes from. If I take this, sorry, and I take this top constraint and I change it to level two, it brings that wall down to level two, right? If I hover over a wall and I press tab one time, tab, click. I can define all of these at the same time to be redefined, right? So all of those drop down. Um, I can do the same thing here. Tab, click, and I redefine these uh, from unconnected to level two. Okay, so that's great. Now, if I move any of my levels or, you know, change anything in any way, you know, all of these things, they all alter at the same time, right? Wall heights will alter, um, widths will alter, and they'll you know, change things um, simultaneously that I change in one view, it changes in the other view. All right, so any questions on defining a base and a top constraint? No? Mine doesn't work. Yours doesn't work? Let's take a look. After this, after like this lesson, mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, being able, you know, top and bottom constraint. And I want to remind you of a couple of other things. We have a base offset where if there's an instance of we need to define something from level one to level two, but, you know, on this wall, we need to have it up six inches at the base because there's something happening there, right? We can do six inches, hit apply, and because I have defined that base offset to be six inches, it bumps the base of that wall up six inches, okay? What's that? Is that what it, does? it bumped it up. Bumped it up. Yes, so it now rests six inches above level one. Do you see that? Okay. Yeah, just like that. Okay, so if I want that to go away, I click on the wall and I type zero, enter, or I can come down here to apply and that goes away, right? If I want the top of the wall to, uh, to go <laughs> up above, you know, the level two constraint, and I don't want to create a new level to assign it, I can click on top offset and we could do something like three foot enter. And that wall bumps up three feet. So it's three feet taller than level two, right? But it still maintains that definition of being defined from level one up to level two with a three foot offset, okay? One final thing I wanna remind you about walls before we move on to their definition is that we have something called a location line on walls and it's pretty important. Um, location line, I'm gonna click on this wall is where you draw or modifications happen about that wall, right? So if I have, for example, this wall is defined at the wall center line, if I decide I want to flip the orientation, right, and I press spacebar, nothing's gonna happen here because it, um, let me change this wall type. Let's see, there we go. And let's change the coarseness of this level to medium. Oop, oh, did you see what happened? There we go. 
thinker. Right? If, it's, if this wall has been drawn um, according to wall center line, the um, location line is at the center. And if I choose to flip that object, it flips about the center. Right? And if I change this to finish face exterior, right? when I perform a, a modification command or I flip the wall, it flips about that line. Right? So that can be pretty important to remember. Okay, so I've got my walls. Um, we know about the location line, the wall location line. We know about um, defining the top and bottom constraints. Uh, so now how do we actually define the, the wall assembly, right? How do we tell Revit that this is a two by four stud wall with gypsum board on both sides, right? Maybe we can add tile to it or something, okay? Let's talk about that. Now, something, again, I, I kind of touched on this last time, but Revit is not the type of software where you create brand new things all the time, right? It's very cumbersome to create brand new things. And, and sometimes, in some cases, you can't even create brand new things, right? Um, what you have to do in Revit, instead of creating brand new things, is you have to take an object that is closest in definition to the object you want to create. You need to copy it, you need to rename it, and then redefine it, okay? And that is going to be the process we follow with walls and doors and windows and families and roof and floor and ceiling and really anything in Revit, right? We take an odd, we, when we want to create something new, a new definition, we take an existing object, we copy it, rename it, redefine it, and then we use it every single time, okay? Um, we can go out and we can find things if we want. We don't have a close definition. You can go to places like Revit City and you can download blocks. You can go to manufacturer's website like Kohler plumbing you know, accessories and find toilets and sinks and faucets and washing machines and whatever you need to online as well, right? Um, so we're not just limited to Revit here. We can go out and find other things we need. Okay, let's talk about redefining our walls, right? Um, and I'm gonna change my coarseness level to fine. There we go. All right, so when I click on a wall, um, you'll notice under the properties dialog box that we have this drop down pop up or, or it highlights, right? If I hit escape and I have nothing selected in the view, the properties are associated with the view, right? It says this is a floor plan, right? We can do various things to it. But the second I, I click on something, click, then I get properties for that object. If I drop down, um, because I'm in the architecture template for Revit, there are some predefined architectural things in here. And so I have a bunch of different wall types here that are available for me to use. Okay, so if I drop down, I have that object selected, I can click on, you know, uh, exterior ethos on metal studs, click, and it changes that wall type, right? So that's how, number one, we're going to change wall types, and that changes the definition of it, right? So it went from that 2 by 4 wall or whatever it was to this exterior wall with a bunch of other things in it, right? Um, one thing before we get into the actual definitions and I want to talk about is match properties, right? We have match properties in, in Revit as well as we have it in AutoCAD. Um, question, I don't know the I, where the icon is. <laughs> We're going to look this one up again. Uh, the, short, the keyboard shortcut is MA. Let's see, match properties Revit. Modify, okay, it's under modify. Right there, there it is, match properties, MA. And essentially what match properties um, allows you to do, it, is, it is allows you to choose one item that you like and prefer and match other items to that. Um, and that is universal. So whether it is doors, windows, you know, ceilings, roofs, or wall types, or whatever, <laughs> stairs, um, match properties will allow you to take one object and select it as kind of your ideal and then match other items to that object, okay? So I can click on match properties, I can type MA, MA, click on one object, and when I hover and click on a second, click, it matches that object to the first, right? So there's kind of your first way of redefining walls, right? By taking one item and matching it to a second. Okay, so I can go around, click, click, click. This is really magical, I feel like. <laughs> right? And there we go. Okay. So there's one way of wall definition, which um, I actually really like because I've said this before, but my biggest pet peeve in Revit is I'm constantly searching for things all over the place. Where's that setting? Where's that wall type? Where's that component that I want to use? Where's that detail component? Where's that line that I want to use, right? And so to be able to do this, 
I think it very easily gets you to where you need to be, right? It changes things very quickly, and you can have one little tiny piece of something drawn somewhere and find it very quickly in your drawing and match other items to it, right? Instead of selecting items, searching through a menu, hoping you find what you need, okay? If you do that on Windows, would the, is the sizing the same? Just change your thickness? It depends. No, it, well, it depends. So if you have a two-foot window and you um, have a three-foot window, right, it's going gonna, it's gonna to match it. Um, and they're the same style. The styles will stay the same, but the, the size is dependent. It's a type-specific um, uh, parameter. So no, it, it will change it. So if you click on a two-foot fix and then you match the three-foot fix, they're going to go to both two foot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yes. But in the case of like a storefront where um, the size is really dependent on the length, like you draw a storefront in a length, right? It's not a set length. It will just match the type. So you'll take one storefront that's three foot and you, you match this other storefront to it. It's just going to convert one, you know, this is going to match this storefront to this storefront and not change the length. Does that make sense? Okay. All right. So let's talk about redefining walls, right? So we have match properties, not redefines. Um, but how do we kind of make our own brand new wall types? Again, we don't have a, quote, new wall, you know, button. We can't just say create new wall and then define it and use it. We have to find a wall that is most like the wall type we want to create, copy it, rename it, you know, copy it, duplicate it, rename it, and then use it, redefine it and use it. So in this case, I'll just take this wall that we have here, and this says it's um, a brick on CMU, brick on CMU, and we'll redefine that, okay? Maybe we put a metal stud in there, right? Um, now, I'm going to just give a little bit of a caveat here, maybe. Um, for those of you that are maybe in construction management or have worked before, you know, this is going to be for you especially, right? Um, you know how a wall assembly looks, right? You know what elements go into a wall assembly, but for new students or people who've never worked before, they don't know what a wall assembly necessarily looks like yet, right? They will. They'll get there. Um, but today, they don't really know what a wall assembly looks like, right? Um, so I'm going to give you basic parameters on how to change these things. Um, but the hard part for you will be when you go to work, what exactly is this wall made up of, right? Where, where, what size are studs? I don't know. How thick is brick? I don't know. What is an, you know, is there an air gap? I don't, I maybe, who knows? Um, you know, how big is CMU? I don't know. I can Google it, but it's hard and, you know, so I'm not really so much worried about you knowing exactly how things go together right now so much as you know how to um, edit these walls and then that, you know, you know how to edit it and then you can input the cor correct information later on, right? So, you know, we're not going to be super accurate on how the wall is supposed to be generated um, in terms of, you know, how thick a brick is or how thick drywall is or whatever. Um, we're not going to be too worried about that. What we are going to be worried about is how to define these so you can understand that system, okay? So, with that said, and this is the hardest for new design students because you guys don't know anything, right? <laughs> and that's okay. You, you'll get there. Um, but I want to show you how to create a new wall type. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to select the wall that is closest you know, to the wall type I want to generate. I'm going to click on Edit Type. We'll do this about five times today because this is really the process you follow for everything. All right. When I hit Edit Type, I, go, I come into the Type Properties dialog box right and there's a lot of things here okay I'm not gonna worry about all these things just yet what I'm really gonna worry about with regard to defining my walls is structure so I'm gonna come over here to edit because I want to edit the structure of my wall assembly and this is where it gets really tricky right um, this is how this wall is currently defined right now I know right um, and it's it's comprehensive <laughs> um, when I'm in this edit assembly dialog box, I see the family name is basic, or the family type is a basic wall. Um, the type is an exterior brick on CMU wall. The thickness is one foot seven and a half inch. We get some things that we don't really worry about. Maybe the mechanical engineers or whatever are worried about, right? But we're not too worried about it. Um, <laughs> it's a lot, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, so 
you know, we get a lot of information about the, the wall here. We notice different things, right? We see we have a finish designation, which is brick. We have a thermal air layer. We have a membrane layer. We have a structural layer. We have a substrate layer. And we have a finish layer. Um, so you hit... Uh, So oh, yours looks a little different. Hold, uh, no, no, I think I'm doing mine. I don't think that's it. We'll come back and we'll do this all over again too. Okay, but what I really just want to show you here is that we have all of the elements that you know this wall assembly is is made from, and you guys don't know what all of it is yet, right? That's my point. Who cares that right now today if CMU is seven and five eighths of an inch? Who knows that except for maybe Jake, right? <laughs> Well, we don't do that. We don't round and rev it. <laughs> uh, well, with the, with the joint, right? With the mortar joint, it rounds up to eight. Yes. Um, anyway, right? But we're not really worried about these numbers so much as how to define them. Um, so I have this dialog box. I can make it larger and smaller, right? So mine is kind of enveloping the whole screen. I can drag it over here. You'll see my sample height here is 20 feet. You can change that, but we don't really need to. Um, I have this little preview button down here that I can click open and it gives me a preview of when I change things what that wall is going to look like, okay, which is nice. This preview is in floor plan view, but I can change it by clicking down here to section and I can look at it like that, okay. This dialog box is finicky and it's finicky in that if you accidentally especially if you've used AutoCAD before, if you get used to moving around and then something doesn't go your way, you hit escape, right? It doesn't say, hey, would you like to save your changes? You just spent 20 minutes defining a wall. It just exits, right? And you panic, like, ooh, why, right? <laughs> um, so let me just tell you that up front, right? If I'm in this section dialog box and I get in the habit of just hitting escape, see, it didn't ask me, it just exited out, okay? And then you think, well, how do I get back there again, right? A few choice words, right? <laughs> um, I love Revit. Right? So I'm going to hit uh, edit type, get back there. Here we are. It's showing me a preview and sectional view again. I'm going to click on edit structure. And here are all of our, our definitions again. Okay. I have an exterior side of the wall and I have an interior side of the wall, right? So we're going to be building things, you know, according to sides. So you do have to know that which side is inside and which side is outside, right? Um, you'll notice here we have thing, some things going on. We have a function and we have a material and we have a thickness. Does it wrap and is it structural? We're not going to worry about these last two just yet, okay? We're just going to worry about these first three. You're also going to notice that when I hover my mouse over these numbers, I get a little arrow um, like this. And if I click, 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 it highlights each one of those areas, right? Click, click, click. You're going to notice that if I click on this area called finish number two and I click on up, up, it moves it up. I can move it down, right? So we can rearrange these things pretty easily. Uh, you're going to notice that I could delete an item. So finish number two, delete, and it goes away. Okay, just like that, the finish is gone. Uh, you're going to also notice that we can insert, right? So I can start adding things, okay? Uh, and I want to subtract some things. So delete, 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 delete. Okay. I'm going to hit cancel because I didn't want to delete all that stuff. Here we go. Um, and we have some other things down here we're not going to quite worry about just yet either, right? We're really going to kind of just worry about from this point upward, right? And I'm going to change this to a a floor plan view so we can see it a little better okay all right so um, I'm gonna I just wanted to show you what this dialog box looks like and actually let me show you how we edit it edit a few things and then I'm gonna go back I'm gonna kind of go backwards and show you how we make the new wall type right but I want to talk about these definitions first so we have finish number one here on the exterior side we have finish number two which is five on the uh, interior side we have substrates. You guys understand what a finish is, right? Like gypsum board or brick or whatever, okay? Um, substrate is going to be something like plywood, right? So you have a wood stud wall and the substrate would be kind of the structure on the outside of that envelope that holds it all sort of together, I guess, maybe is a good way. Um, but that, that's, called, that's a substrate or furring strips or something to that effect. 
Um, inside these two grayed out areas, which are called core boundary, we have our structure element. So that's kind of one thing that is going to remain pretty, um, pretty definite through your wall definition is that, you know, you can move some of these things around sometimes, um, but within the core boundary, you always have to have a structural element. So whether it's a wood stud or it's gypsum board or it's CMU or whatever it is, you have to define a piece of structure between the two core boundaries, right? Um, you could have nothing on, on either side. You could just have, you know, wood stud as the, as the, the structure. Um, but you do have to have a structural element to define the wall. We have membranes, right? Um, things, membranes are going to be things like, um, you know, like, uh, well, I guess we have thermal air layer. Damp proofing, that's a good example. Damp proofing, right? So that spray on black bitumous stuff that you spray on foundations, right? Um, or we sometimes use membrane layers for paint because it's a zero width element that just illustrates something is there, but not, it doesn't really have a thickness to it, right? Um, thermal air layers, so insulation or air gaps between brick and substrate, right? Um, and then we have our exterior finish. So we have all of these different definitions and functions, right? To define these, we're gonna click on the area that we wanna define and we're gonna drop down. And this is where you define what these elements are, okay? We have a material. And the material, um, if I click on my material, I have a little ellipsis, little browser box right here. If I click on that, I get just a list of materials, right? And, um, you know, I think materials are kind of funny because you think, oh, it's brick, it has to be brick. But when you actually look at what brick means, Right? Brick just means that I have this pattern and on the surface, so it looks like a little brick pattern. And it just means that when the wall is cut, like in floor plan view, I see a dash like this, right? So it's dashed. And I see this red color when it's in shaded view, right? That is the complete definition of brick, right? We're not going to put in there that it's a certain denseness or thickness. I mean, you know, we don't say that it's made out of clay or whatever. Like for our purposes, right, architecturally, it is pink when it renders. It has this brick surface pattern. And when it gets cut in floor plan view, it's diagonal hatch. That's it, right? And I guess I wanted to say that because there's no magic to these materials. It's just a hatch pattern in a render material, essentially, okay? Um, so when we redefine or we create materials, that's all they are. Yeah. Right. Wood. Yeah, it's wood. Well, so um, yeah, a stud is going to be a soft wood. So if you know what it is, right? The, I mean, the better the definition of what the item is, great. Um, so for like the material of this structure, right? The structure is structure, but the definition of the material tells you what it is. So CMU block, right? But if I want to change this to like a wood stud. I just happen to know that softwood it, lumber is def defined in here, right? But if you wanted to change it to Douglas fir or whatever, then you could. But again, it doesn't really matter, right? Because we're saying, hey, this is lumber. And lumber just means it is, you know, yellow when it renders. We don't have a cut pattern. We could define one if we wanted. Yep. Do the top plates here or do you do those in the component? In the, well, so the top plates are going to be detailed when you, a little bit later, use the detail component. Okay. So we don't define that kind of information in here. This is just pure wall assembly, like at a cut floor plan view. Okay, mm -hmm. so we've got our softwood lumber, right? Um, we have this kind of yellow color that it renders as. Um, we could say, hey, let's change the surface pattern. So. You know, on the outside, if you were to look at it in 3D view, maybe it looks like, hey, oh, wood, right? Wood. Okay. And if we cut it in floor plan view, then maybe we want it to look like solid fill. We'll get into this a little later, right? But that's as easy as it is to define these elements. You know, I think I, and I too am guilty of this. I get in my mind, I'm like, it's wood. It has, we got to define actual wood, right? But it's just a hat pattern and a color, essentially. It's just as easy as that. So I hit OK, and that defines that structural material as soft wood. And then I define a thickness, right? So, you know, we'll do a two by four wood stud. And immediately, right, I see my wood stud pop in there. 
and I've redefined that element. Okay. If I want to redefine the finish, I can change the brick material from brick to, let's see if there's a stone material in here. Well, we have concrete. We don't have stone. All right. Um, I'm not going to, I don't want to show you how to create a new material just yet. Unless, well, we could, do you want to know how? Yes. Okay. All right. So if we look for a material and it's not there, right? Again, you know, just thinking that this is no big deal. It's just a material. We're going to define it. Um, if there's not something here that I want um, to create a new material, I'm going to come down here to create new material, right? Oop, I clicked a little fast. I use my drop down and click create new material. Or if there's a material here that is very similar to an, the new material I want to create, this is actually probably the only instance where you have the ability to create something brand new. Um, I could click on, you know, let's see, metal deck. And if I want something new, I click on new, or if I you know, want some, to duplicate this, I can hit duplicate. In the case of duplicating, what's nice is it saves all of these settings, right? If there were better ones. Um, and I could name it something like, um, I don't know, metal deck painted or whatever you want it to be. Enter, right? And by just doing that, I've created a brand new material, right? It's, it's just really as simple as that. So I hit OK, metal painted deck and it'll be three or four inches, whatever you want it to be, right? Is and that standard in there for you, like you just added that new wall type, is that standard in there for good or is that just for this project? It's for this project, okay. yes, yes. Unless you change things in your template, okay. then okay. it's gonna be project specific. Okay. Yes. All right, so I'm going along and I'm kind of changing things. Um, We'll go back and show you. I'm not actually creating a brand new wall type just yet. We're just talking about definitions here. Yeah. Okay. So, you know, I, I guess maybe to start from the beginning, when we are defining a wall, right, um, we want to pick the functions we need, right, in order that we want them. Um, we have to change the materials and change the thicknesses to match, right? Um, one thing in here, the rules that kind of apply, we have to have a structural element between the two core boundaries. You can have two of them. You know, it's constant debate. Do you, yes, these are the debates we have at home. Um, do you want to, do you put the substrate, do you put the plywood in the core boundary? My husband is just adamant. I'm like, I don't, it doesn't really bother me. I don't really care, you know. Um, but he likes to have the wood stud or whatever and the substrate in the core boundary. Great, that's fine. Um, you know, but I guess the main point is you could have more than one piece of structure in there. You just have to define something in there. And then you're going to build towards the interior side and you're going to build towards the exterior side, right? And for those of you that know, you know, you can order, the, order these somewhat in the direction that they need to be and what they need to be. So, you know, you're going to have the, um, the wood stud and then maybe you have your substrate after that here and then you have a thermal air layer and then you have brick or whatever, right? Um, so you're going to build your objects this direction. Um, Revit will generally accept most combinations of wall assemblies, but if you've misordered something that is very heinous to Revit, it will tell you, no, you cannot do that. Or if you've given something a thickness that can't have a thickness, it will say, hey, no, you can't do that. Um, just so you know, okay? Um, okay, so I'm going to cancel out of this just real quick, and I wanted to find something else first. All right, so I need to create a new wall type. I click on my wall, I hit edit type. We've talked about how to define the wall assembly, right? But how do we create a brand new wall type that we will then redefine, okay? You're going to select the object you want to, that is most similar to the object you want to create. You're gonna hit duplicate here, duplicate. You're gonna rename it, so this could be exterior and then we could call it you know wall type one and the way that you're going to name choose to name these walls is probably going to be pretty specific to your office right um, your office will have standards they'll say hey we name these just like the AIA la layer naming convention where you know a dash wall dash wood or it's wall type one two three four five um, or it's wood stud wall gypsum on bo both sides it's very descriptive right so there's really no wrong, right or wrong way as to how you name your walls. It's just kind of per your office standard. We're going to give ours a designation as an interior exterior. 
and then we'll say like wall type one and then maybe we make this very simple and we'll we'll give it a definition wood stud or maybe we'll give it two by four wood stud with brick okay so in clicking duplicate giving it a new name I just created a new wall type okay and the reasoning behind that is that if I would have taken that original wall and just hit edit and I had used it somewhere else in my project if I edit that wall type it will edit every instance of that wall type in my entire project so I don't want to edit things that are in the library I want to take it I want to duplicate it and then redefine it because if I redefine the original and hit save it is permanently edited and it will change every instance where it is located okay so I duplicated it I renamed it now I'm gonna go into structure and I'm gonna hit edit and I'm gonna make edits to my wall type here so this one is uh, two by four wood stud so I'm gonna change my structure to wood stud by clicking clicking on the ellipse looking for soft wood soft wood lumber okay and giving it a new thickness We'll do five and a half inches. Okay, I'm going to get rid of this. Um, this is on the interior side. So I don't want a substrate metal furring. I'm going to delete that. So I'm going to select over here, click delete. And finish number two, which is on the interior side, as opposed to finish number one over here, which is on the exterior side, right? I'm going to change this from, we'll make it weird. Sorry, guys. All of you who are in construction management will gripe, right? <laughs> we'll change it to something else. Let's see, what goes on the inside? Let's do glass. We can do glass. There you go. Clear glazing. I knew it. See, we already have a comment. <laughs> right? Where I'm is the artist inside of you, man? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just thinking about the big problem. It's too much talk on you, too. Stop, Jake. Let it go. Let it go. <laughs> It'll just be magically held up with wonderful little system of metal channels. <laughs> right? It'll be beautiful. <laughs> okay. Jake, stop. Forward thinking artistic wall. Oh, boy. And we'll make it thick. We'll make it like two inches thick. Even better, right? Nice and extensive. <laughs> um, then we have our softwood lumber. Then on the other side, as we move to the exterior side, we're going to just remove a few of these things. We don't really need damp proofing, so we're going to hit delete. We're going to get rid of this. Well, <laughs> well we're, not, we're going to leave our thermal air layer. We'll say it's rigid insulation. That's great, right? Thermal air layer meaning insulation or a, a pocket of air, right, behind some masonry. Um, we'll make our air layer thicker. Let's make it six inches so you can really see that change, right? And we don't want brick. Maybe we want, um, we'll do wood, like wood siding maybe. I think we have siding in here. We don't have wood siding. Okay, well, let's make a new material that's called wood siding. So I'm going to click on new material, and on my default new material pops up. I'm going to right click on it and choose rename. You used to be able, and let me see if we can do it now. You used to be able to click on it very slowly, and the name, it doesn't anymore. It used to be able to pop up, so, and it let you edit it, but it doesn't anymore. So we'll call this wood siding, enter. And then we can change how we view it over here. So um, this first uh, setting will, will change the way it looks when it's in a 3D view. You know how brick looks kind of a pink color? Um, it's because of how this color is set, right? So if we want our wood to look kind of yellow, whatever, right? Marigold. There you go. The surface pattern. So if we view it in 3D, you know, like brick shows a brick pattern, right? So this what wood siding. See, what did you create? Um, the surface pattern will be that view if you look at it in 3D. And I click on that and all my hatches pop up. So we'll pick, you know, maybe some, it's horizontal. So I hit OK. And then when it's cut in floor plan view like this, right, that's how brick looks when it's cut. Um, we'll change the cut pattern to uh, something, let's see, let's do something like that, plywood. OK. That's new. Oh, I didn't know that they had that there nice solves a lot of problems you guys okay so I hit okay so I've defined all of the kind of 
graphic qualities and I hit of my new wood siding, I hit OK. There's my wood siding, we'll make it, you know, two inches thick, enter. Okay, so now my wall assembly is one foot six and a half inches. And I think, oh gosh, maybe that thermal layer is a little too thick. We'll give it, make it one inch. Okay, but now that's what it looks like. I'm gonna hit OK, OK again. And now that wall assembly has changed. Um, if I change to shaded view, SD, or I come down here and I change to shaded, oops, I can see the change. Okay. Now, what I want to illustrate about this is that I started with this wall type, right? Which means I did things right, right? Because this wall type stayed the same. So I was able to take this wall type, hit edit type, duplicate it, rename it, and then redefine it without altering the original wall type. Now if I wanted to change all of these walls to this type, I could come out here, I could hover and tab and click, and I could change the wall type. Let's see, I named it WT1, so I could start WT1, oh, there it is, click, and it changed all of those wall types. I could also type uh, MA match properties, click and start matching. Click, 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 click and match all of those. Okay. Let's do another, let's change, let's define an, another wall type. So I go to architecture tab. Oops, what am I stuck in here? Here we go. I click on wall. And I think, well, I want to create an interior wall that's two by four with gypsum board on both sides and tile on one side, right? So I look in my catalog of wall types that are already created and I pick one that is closest to whatever I want to generate, right? So maybe, you know, four and seven eighths interior looks pretty good to me, pretty close to what I want to generate. I'm going to hit edit type, duplicate. Let's call this interior WT2, and it will be um, two by four wood stud with tile. I'm going to hit OK. So what I just did there, I duplicated it, I renamed it. Now the original stays as is, and I'm changing a copy of that original. I hit edit. And now it's time for me to change the construction of the assembly, right? We're going over this a lot and I'm spending a lot of time because this is really what you do with everything in Revit from now on, right? I want to create a new floor type. I select the one that's most similar to the one I want to create. I duplicate it, I rename it, I redefine it, okay? All right, so I look at this and I see my structure is a metal stud. I wanted a wood stud. So I'm gonna change from metal stud, click and browse, I type wood. And we'll choose softwood lumber. Okay, I'm gonna hit okay. And it's gonna be, this is a two by four, so three and a half inches. My finish number two, right? It's gypsum wallboard, great. And we'll make it half inch. Half inch. But now I think, well, I wanted tile on one side. and. And this is an interior wall, so there's really not an exterior or an interior. So it, in this case, it wouldn't matter which side the tile went on because I could flip it, right? Um, but you just want to think in your head, you know, where does, where does this material need to go? I'm going to click here and choose insert. And it goes above my finish, which is where I wanted it. But in the case where it didn't, I could move it up or down, 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 right? Up, 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 up. And we are going to choose finish, we've got two finishes, we're going to do finish number two again because we're on the exterior side. And here we're going to type in tile. And if there had not been a tile um, defined here, we could have created a new material type. Mosaic gray tile. Okay. And we'll make, we'll make it thick tile. Let's make it three inches thick. There you go. <laughs> Do you like that? <laughs> okay. I knew I knew you were thinking a half inch. That's why I did three inches. <laughs> All right, we'll make it a little narrower. We'll do one inch. 
There you go. The little channel things. Or a glass uh, glass block. Glass block. There you go. Glass block. Okay. All right. So there we go. We have it looking pretty good. I hit OK. I hit OK. And now it's ready for me to use, right? I have my basic wall. And I can come in here and I can start creating my... Here's a beginning design student project right here. There you go. Okay. So I've got tile on one side. Um, I'm not able to view it very well though because my thin lines is making, they're making, it's making the lines look thick. So TL, thin lines, or I could come up here to thin lines and change it. But now I'm able to view my wall assembly a little bit better, right? So if I wanted to click it and I wanted to change the orientation, I could uh, spacebar, right? If I thought to myself, you know, I like this wall type, but really what I should have done was to define tile on both sides. I can click on it, I can hit edit type. And if I truly want to edit every instance of this wall type, I can hit edit and I can just add to it, right? So if I wanted to add another finish down here, which is tile, I click there. I'm going to choose insert. Ooh, it went above my finish and I want it below. So I'm going to choose down. And it defined it as structure, which is not right. So I'm going to click on structure and choose finish interior, number interior, interior exterior. Mm -hmm. So I've got my interior finish, exterior finish. And I'm going to choose my tile again, my thick tile, and it remembered. Okay one inch on that side as well. Okay. Oh, where did I? Oh, wait, what did I do? Oh, I think I defined this wrong in the first place. There we go. See, it gave me an error. I hit okay. I hit okay. And it's redefined all those walls. Okay. Okay. Does that make sense so far? How you're going to redefine some walls. So when you create your wall types now for your house project, right, you have wall type 1, 2, 3, 4, you can, you can define them, right? Um, I like to name things wall type 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, or whatever, because it's easy for me to search for those in the search option of the wall type, right? So, for example, when I click on wall, you know, in me knowing how Revit works, if I type in, like, stud, look how many pop up, right, with that word in it. Well, I don't like that, because I'm looking for something specific. If I type in brick, okay, well, I've got six, you know, and th this is, you know, there's not very many, but in a, in a project where I have a lot of wall types, it gets cumbersome. So I can remember things like, well, I think it was, and again, this is dependent on you remembering which wall type it was, but I could type in WT2 or whatever, and it brings up what I need to bring up, right? Okay. Any questions so far? Walls? All right, I'm going to leave the wall topic um, at this for now so that you can um, hopefully over the next day kind of uh, try and get some of your wall types built for your project. Do you have ceilings in there? Or are those wall? Oh, I thought you had a ceiling. I'm like, somebody's jumping ahead. <laughs> Look like ceilings from here. <laughs> um, but I want you to get some wall types created for your project, okay? So do that and see if you can... Um, if you can successfully get those created. And if not, we'll go over it again on Wednesday. We have time on Wednesday to talk about walls again. Um, but what I also want to talk about today, um, aside from creating new wall types, is a couple of things about how to draw your project best, right? Aaron was saying, well, there's not dimensionals on every, and Paul, how, there's not dimensionals on everything. How do we get it exactly perfect, right? Our A students over here. Um, so let's talk about that. Um, there's a couple of different workflows I want to talk about, okay? Before I do that, I'm going to come over here to our assignment. I'm going to download some of the files. And I'm going to go to here, where this is where all the information is again for our project. Okay. And main floor, there we go. And I can look at this floor plan, and I mean, there's a lot that I can tell about it, right? But then, but that's not everything, right? I don't really know necessarily, you know, maybe how 
long this wall segment is or you know a few of these things that's okay um if we're gonna bluff it a little bit yes um but i can somewhat maybe look at this and say well it's 16 feet maybe that's about you know i don't know maybe half of that so maybe that's another eight feet right and you'll get a good sense when you when you anyway or we can get it nice and precise as like you want right so let me show you a couple of uh, workflows and how to go about that okay I'm gonna save this on my desktop and we'll talk about that okay so I can go downloads And I have to say, we've never done this specific project before. Um, so there might be a couple of bugs that will work out this semester. <laughs> I'm not usually a risk taker like that. Kevin kind of, you know, talked me into it. Um, so, wild ride. <laughs> I know. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah, he's a lot more loose with it. I'm very, I'm, I'm quite strict about, I like, you know, um, I, I'm not, I can't. I'm a planner. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so let's talk about how we're going to do this. There's two ways we can go about this, right? For those of you that know AutoCAD, this is a perfect example of the AutoCAD slash Revit workflow, right? Um, if I wanted to use AutoCAD, and for those of you that don't know AutoCAD, you can just watch, and it's okay because we're going to get to the Revit portion of this. Um, but I do want to show you how, if you wanted to use AutoCAD to do this, you could. Do you think you know? Okay. We'll see. We'll see, Aaron. Okay. I might have shown you this at the very end of the semester, maybe. I don't remember. Sometimes I show people if they ask, but I don't usually bring it up on my own. All right, so if I wanted to use AutoCAD, you can bring raster images into AutoCAD and scale them up appropriately to then use um, to draw with. Jake's looking at me like, what? Why have you been withholding this information all of these weeks, right? All right, so I can go to Insert, or I could also use the XREF menu, so I could XR, and I can XREF an image in, um, but I'm going to do Insert. I'm going to do Insert Raster Image Reference, and I'm going to go and I'm going to pick my uh, floor plan. I'm going to hit Open. I'm going to hit OK, and I'm going to click and hit Enter and place it, right? So I just placed my little kitchen or my little thing in here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the Align command, A-L-I-G-N, and I'm going to scale this up using the Align command, essentially, okay? Um, this will be in the lecture, so you can do, watch me do it again multiple times. Um, but essentially, and I'm just going to do a little trick. I'm going to um, fade this a tiny bit so I can see it a little better. Okay. I can see my cursor a little bit better, right? But essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a known element. So if I, for example, let's see, 16 by 16, all right? So those are interior dimensions, but still that'll give me a good um, estimate. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the line tool and I'm going to draw a line as best I can from here to here, indicating, you know, even though it's not right, that indicates 16 foot 2, right? Does that make sense to everybody? AutoCAD users? Okay. <laughs> you, he already knows everything. You guys need to make friends, huh? Um, then I'm going to draw a line over here, 16 foot 2, right? So, in action, so it's tiny. Um, let me scale this up a bit. I'm going to scale this up by a factor of like 10 or 20. Scale, SC scale, and I, you know, I'm not gonna. Okay. So essentially, what I have here is I've got this line over here that I know is 16 foot 2, and then I have this other line that I drew that we don't know how long it is, but it represents on that plan that is not the right size, 16 foot 2. Okay. So I'm gonna use the align command, A L I G N, and this is. It'll be on the YouTube lecture, so you'll be able to follow it again, but it's not a difficult command. You just have to get the sequencing right. So I'm going to type a line, A-L-I-G-N, enter. And it says, select the objects to align. So I'm going to grab the image and the line. Okay. Once those are selected, I'm going to hit enter. Now it says, specify the first source point. 
source, click, destination, click, source, click, destination, click. I'm going to hit enter. And it says scale your objects based on your alignment points. Yes. So I'm going to click on yes. Oh, come on. Yes. Ah, yes. And it's, did you see it scaled it up? Okay. So now if I use distance and I measure this, 16 foot 2. Magic, right? Yes. I'm not going to do it again just because you can watch it on YouTube again, but I, you know, I essentially took one unknown object and you're like, well, how do you know if it scaled it up right? Well, I don't know what the scale factor was that it scaled it up by, but I know that if I scale it all together, it's all together wrong. And when I scale it up, it all scales proportionally up. So everything should be pretty close right now. Um, if I hadn't known 16 foot two, I would have guessed that maybe this entry door was three feet wide and I would have scaled off something like that, right? So now I can come in here and I can measure and I can say, oh, that, whatever that's supposed to say, six feet or something, eight, eight feet. So I can maybe measure the kitchen and see it's seven foot 11 and 25, 30 seconds, right? So basically eight feet, so you can round to eight feet, okay? Um, so you look at it and you, you say, well, this hall is, again, you know, you measure this, four, four foot one. So I would guess maybe like four foot, a four foot hallway, right? So get it, you'll get, you'll be able to get it as close as you want. So with this workflow, you can use AutoCAD. So you use AutoCAD, you draw all the walls, you get it perfect, right? Which I feel like is very valid because I said this before, I'm, maybe I haven't, I say, I say in AutoCAD, I'm really fast at Revit. I can go pretty fast, but I'm still faster in AutoCAD, right? So just plain drafting on a flat floor plan like this, I feel like um, I can construct a floor plan alone quicker in AutoCAD, right? You can't beat Revit with coordination and, and developing elevations and other things at the same time as you're developing a floor plan. Um, but flat out drafting, you know, pretty quick in AutoCAD. So if you want to work this way, if you're more comfortable with AutoCAD right now, fine with me, okay? So if I were to just very quickly draw a little outline of this, right? Click, 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 click. There we go. We'll just do that and we will close up. There's my floor plan. Okay, save. So I'm going to save as and I'm going to save this on my desktop and I'm going to call it um, Rivet AutoCAD floor plan. <laughs> And I don't think I re, well, maybe I'll leave that image in. No, I don't need that image anymore. So I'm going to delete it because you will very comprehensively, you know, draw the whole thing out. Okay. So there's my one workflow. I draw everything in my floor plan in AutoCAD, and then I'm going to insert it into Revit for use. Okay. So if I were in Revit now and I wanted to use that, I'm going to delete these all out. And again, this is in the YouTube video. So if you, you know, are... It is on, yep, so if you go to home, <coughs> right there, <coughs> and they're all there, it's like magic. <laughs> I'm surprised you didn't have the link already. <laughs> didn't you have the link to my class last semester? <laughs> Funny. So if I want to use that now, I can go in, in Revit, and this is something you do all the time as well. I can link in or I can, um, I can link or I can insert in the AutoCAD file. Now if I link it, that means that if I change the original AutoCAD file and update it and save it, Revit is smart enough to update those changes, okay? And if I um, insert it, the, the AutoCAD file is inserted standalone and it doesn't update if you change the original, right? So doesn't really matter because you're just kind of getting in, in there as a reference. What if I inserted a 3D model of a pumpkin? Uh huh. And then I done the same. What do you mean it doesn't? It doesn't. You're using the obsolete in Revit. Well, but I think maybe it it would if you link it. But the thing about it is that if you bring in a 3D model from from AutoCAD. I don't think it's going to translate into a BIM model, right? You might bring a bunch of kind of, quote, dumb objects in that you can maybe manipulate, but it won't be the same as true Revit. If it was a work, I waste time. I get the architectural drawings, and then I will make shop drawings, and then I make 3D model, and then I, I 
Yeah. yeah. Is this basically the test by bringing it up? By bringing it into Revit? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So. But it's not going to bring it into smart objects. Like, they won't have the definition of walls. Yeah, bring one for me Let's and we can look at it. You can look at it, yeah. I've never really inserted a 3D model into Revit because I think it's going to be a dumb so model. You, for me, it would be easy to generate texture and then detail in Revit. Right. Instead of drawing everything. Everything in AutoCAD. And then well, especially when Octopus says, hey, I just want to change this. I'm like, hey, hey. I don't know if I like this behavior going on. <laughs> <laughs> Bring, we'll bring one in and we'll look at it. Okay. Um, all right. So if I want to now use that AutoCAD file, I'm going to go to Insert. And I'm going to choose, uh, I'm, I don't think I'm going to link because once we get it drawn in Revit, it's useless to us, right? So I'm just going to, ins, where is it? Import CAD. Import CAD. I browse to wherever that CAD file is, Revit AutoCAD floor plan. I can choose to preserve the colors on it, or if I want to make it black and white, I can drop down and choose black and white, but I'm going to preserve. One important thing is you're going to want to make sure you check current view only, otherwise it gets inserted in every single view in your file, right? And that's okay, but then if you have to go ahead and delete it, which you don't want to do. So current view only, so mine will pop in at level one, and then we're just going to hit open. There it is, right? All my AutoCAD users are like, okay, here we go. Here we go. It's getting serious. We're getting serious now, right? Um, so now I can use, you know, the tool that I'm very fast at to generate the floor plan and then the tool that is very good at 3D and, and coordination to finish it up, right? I think it's a, it's a good balance. So now all I would do is I would come in, I'd go to architecture, use my walls, and I can snap to these and I can start generating geometry, so right? You want to change the Oh, because you drew it from the, well, wherever you, however you draw it, yeah. So if you're just drawing the inside wall, then you'll draw from finish face interior all the way around. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, that's one workflow, right? So now, um, what if I only know Revit, right? Which a lot of you will only know Revit. How can I do the same thing in Revit? And um, the answer is I'm going to go to insert. What we're going to do is we're going to insert that image. And then we're going to scale it up, just like we did in AutoCAD, but we're just going to work in Revit, okay? So I'm going to go to Insert, and I'm going to choose Image, click, I'm going to find my image, there's my architecture main floor, hit Open, and I'm going to click and place it right in the center of my Revit, um, my Revit workspace, right? But now I look at this and the big, the big deal is, hey, is it the right size, right? It might not be the right size. And so what I'm going to do is, um, and this is something we haven't done. I'm only showing it to you because I want you to be able to scale this up and down. But we'll come back to some of these other methods a little bit later. Okay. So what I'm going to do here, is, in fact, we'll just use a wall. I'm going to click on wall. And I am going to change my location line to finish face interior. And I'm going to draw a wall. Just like I drew a wall in Auto, or the line in AutoCAD, I'm going to kind of get close in there and I'm going to draw this just as um, accurate as I can to the size of that room. Click. Okay. So now that wall, which measures 20 feet in length, which is not well, no. It's not 34. You know what? Yeah. Okay. Is it 34? I shouldn't have done that one. I should have, because I don't know where the living room ends and the dining room begins here. I should have drawn it here. So I'll I'll redo that. So here we go. I'm going to draw that again. Pretty darn close, right? Now, a command we have not learned is scale in Revit. And so I'm going to I'm going to scale this. And to scale it, um, I am going to grab both of these items. And I'm going to, under the modify tab, which pops up after I select these, I'm going to choose scale. And it's right here, RE. and click okay and what i'm going to do is right here sorry i have to remember if this is graphic or new it's graphic graphic allows you to click two points and choose a different or a, a scaling a way to scale 
numeric allows you to say, I want to scale it up twice or three times or four times. So what we want to do is use the graphical scaling option. I'm going to click here. This, this is a little bit counterintuitive to me. And the first thing I have to do is define how long this line is. It's 11 foot 6, and that's not right. But I have to tell Revit, I'm scaling this object, and I'm defining this first object as 11 foot 6. Okay, so click, click. It just defined that as 11 foot 6. And now the second part, which is the actual scaling part, is I'm going to type in what that should actually be, right? So this is going to be 16 foot 2. Enter. It's, it's a little bit odd, right? Let me do it one more time. So I'm going to grab both of these. I'm going to click on scale. It's going to be graphical. I click on one end, and I have to define that length first. This is the same thing in AutoCAD when you click source, destination, source, destination. You measure one, so scale, scale it. What's that? Oh, you can. You can. Yes, you can. Yep. Yes, using the reference. You're right. You can. Yep. So I clicked my first point. I clicked my second point. Click. And now I'm going to, instead of clicking a third point, I'm just going to type in the dimension I want. 16 foot. Oh, well, I wanted two. Shoot. Well, I can do it again, right? Um, scale. Click. Click. Now I'm going to do 16 foot 2. Enter and it scaled it up just a tiny bit more. Okay. So now um, I have this image in here that I can then tr essentially trace, right? And the same thing that you do in AutoCAD that you're going to do here is you're going to get it close enough, right? So if this room measures 12 foot 4 and, and we scaled this up the best we could, so it's 12 foot you know, 1 and 16, 30 seconds or whatever, you, you round it to whatever you think is appropriate, right? Um, so you're going to get it as close as you can. But this gives you a really good you know, hint at what all these things need to be. So for those of you that have already drawn it and are thinking this would have been easier, it likely would have been, but you probably all have been able to use align and trim and move and copy and rotate and type in dimensions and, you know, a lot of good experience with just actually drawing things, which I think is good as well. Okay, that was a lot. I feel like that was a lot for today. <laughs> Any other questions? Okay. So we have, we have one more class session where we can work on walls. If by Wednesday you guys feel like you're pretty good on walls, we can move on to something else. If you feel like you're still struggling with it, right, making new walls, drawing with walls, um, I can do some drawing exercises in class where you watch me draw with Revit, and you can kind of see how I work through it. So maybe we'll say work on your assignment and we'll gauge where you're at, where you're at on Wednesday. Okay. So I won't assign an, a new assignment, just work on completing what is, what is already assigned. Okay, and go to the club meeting on tomorrow. <laughs>